Hey, it's Tom from Inspiration Metalworks, and in this week's video, we're going to go over the flood coolant upgrades we made on our Tormach 440 PCNC mill. Awesome. All right, so um, we have made some pretty significant upgrades on the flood coolant uh, for the 440. Um, you know, I did get the flood coolant uh, option when I purchased the 440. Uh, you get a container about this big, and uh, you know that. It's got the submersible pump in it and stuff like that, and um, you know it does okay. And I think for if you're doing small volume work, um, you know one-off stuff, it, it does just fine. I'm doing a lot of parts, and so it wasn't quite giving me the volume or the pressure that I, I was looking for, and it definitely didn't have the capacity. the The system couldn't keep up, right? I, it would just stack. It couldn't get out of the tray fast enough. So let's take a look at what, what we've done. All right, the first thing to note is we've got a significantly larger uh, capacity. Let's turn this thing on just for guys. All right, so we've got a much, much better uh, capacity. Um, we've got the tub here. Um, just for size comparison, this little guy here was what it came with, right? So I mean, I could set this over here so you can see. We've, we've probably quadrupled the uh, capacity, right? Uh, the other part that we did in all this is um, I made sure that I had good free-flowing uh, return from the coolant and I put this little filter in place and this is uh, this is not my idea. I want to say it was probably uh, the lock cracker uh, site but basically this thing it's just a uh, it's a 10 inch flower sifter, right? You cut a hole in the top, drop it in place and as you can see it is catching an awful lot of chips, right? This is stuff that would get down into the uh, into the, the tray. And in fact, as you can see, it used to. Well, what would happen is you'd get a chip in there, the chip would then get pushed through the line, it would get clogged in the flex lock and you'd get nothing. So let me, I'm gonna reset here. Let's turn the coolant on, we'll let it run for a second. You hear it kick off, it's going through, and in just a minute, we will see some return. Now, the other thing that I did is, you can kind of see here, is I hooked up a filter. Well, that's past tense. Notice, there's nothing running to it right now. That thing requires so much pressure that effectively it just chokes the whole system. So, I gotta figure out how to do this better. Um, it, was, it was choking the system down so much that I wasn't getting the volume of uh, of coolant through that I was I was hoping for. So, yeah, if you got any ideas on this, let me know. Is that just you know needing a bigger? Uh, is that just needing a bigger pump? I don't know. Let's take a look at it from the other end, though. Oh, actually, as you can see now, our return is starting to to flow. All right. All right. So what does that look like in here? Well, I've got the large orifice uh, tips on here right now, and as you can see. It's, you know, we're getting an awful lot of coolant. Uh, we'll see if I can, just for grins, I'll put it down here so you guys can start to see, right? This is stuff that's just been sitting here and it can, it'll just wash it away. Now this is all, these chips that are here, that is stuff that's, um, these are the big chips from the shear hog, right? This whole thing is full of this because I use the shear hog an awful lot. But yeah, as you can see, it definitely does a good job, right? It, it pushes a lot of a lot of coolant through. It washes everything out of the way, and I don't get any problems with uh, you know, recutting chips at this point. It just blows everything off. You might have seen another video where I was having some uh, some chip evacuation issues. Not anymore. I can tell you that. All right, getting into a different view here. Let me move some of these chips out of the way. As you can see, that one of the big issues, and you know, I've got this thing just cranked and running, right? So. You know, trying to keep this where it's draining because this would get filled up and then I would actually get the coolant to such a height in here that it would start to leak through um, through the bolt holes, the through holes. So not, uh, not a great situation. Well, I got that cleared out at this point and having that filter or that uh, sieve in, in place means that if chips get through here, it doesn't matter because they're going to get captured anyways. I'm not worried about it. And you know, the system can just drain everything off and you notice it doesn't ever build up. So let me, let me turn this off. 
and you can see it it's evacuating that coolant very well without having to really make any changes uh, to the setup here All right so that part of it's fine the only thing that I ever run into is I'm moving so much material as you can see right all that that's all sheer hog for you right um, that it sometimes starts to to create a little dam in here but you know that that washes away pretty quickly all right for those of you who are taking notes on 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 this um, I'll try and put some information in the description but effectively what I did was I got a one-third horsepower um, submersible pump that's an always on feature it doesn't have a it doesn't have a um, a switch in it right so I that part of it's being controlled through Pathpilot uh, still. Um, from there, it's you know it was pretty straightforward. In fact, because I'm not using the filter at this time, I didn't really even need any special fittings. It just you know, I think there was one fitting to take it from the three quarter inch hose fitting to I want to say that's a well I, I don't want to misspeak. There's a different kind of fitting. I'll find the information though. So effectively, that was really it. That you know um, the so the pump was about eighty dollars. The um, the container was gosh maybe ten or fifteen dollars, and then that um, that sieve that I got, and I got that through Amazon by the way, um, that was like fifteen dollars. Right, so overall one hundred fifteen dollars or so gets to this point. Now the other things that I did is I added those larger orifices. I got the kit uh, from from Tormach when I bought my machine, so I already had all the the tips and, and uh, things for that. Um, and then uh, the filter and the hoses that I got was another thirty-five, forty dollars total uh, for all that. So if you were to do all this, you know, you really hundred, hundred fifty dollars. Now, does that mean you don't need to get the flood coolant set up from Tormach? Uh, yes and no, right? So I'm going to say you still need to get that um, because what you're really doing is you're getting the controller, you're getting the parts that go in the in the uh, control box. You know, the relays in there because effectively what you're getting is this relay with a pigtail for the um, for the power cord, right? Do you absolutely need to go that route? No, you don't. In fact, you can manually control things. You can use an on-off switch. Um, but if you're not comfortable with going that route, get the get the stuff from Torma. Right? It's just it's you know, the way to go. Um, it's not a bad setup. It just wasn't enough for what I needed. Uh, with that, I think I'm going to call this one a wrap. Um, it's been a, a busy week with the, the move and everything else, and uh, I'm beat. But uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I um, want to do a shout out to all my uh, folks on Patreon. Thank you so much for, uh, for all the support there. Um, hopefully in the next, uh, next couple of videos, well, it might be another week or two before I get to the, the content with it. But, uh, you know, I've got some new, new cameras that came in. Um, so hopefully I'll have some, some more uh, exciting footage than, than what I've had in the past, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Hey, it's Tom from Inspiration Metalworks, and in this week's video, we're going to go over upgrades we made to our Tormach 440 uh, CNC mill. On, uh, yeah, let's just start over again.